Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I'm continuing this study, the book of Galatians, a verse by verse commentary. I'm going to pick up now where I left off last time, Galatians chapter 1 with verse 11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Um, well, I, I, I think I mentioned in the, the previous video, uh, I went into more detail about how Paul learned uh, about Jesus and the gospel, the free gift theology. Uh, and he's stating here that no man taught him. Uh, he didn't learn it from Peter. He didn't learn it from James. He didn't learn it from any of the apostles. Uh, he didn't learn it from an angel. Uh, he, he learned it from Jesus Christ. Um, and there's, he gives an account, a uh, detailed account, uh, at least two or three times uh, in the scriptures in, in the book of Acts uh, and um, about his um, experience uh, on the road to Damascus. Um, but we, we can also um, piece together uh, from the scriptures and, and conclude that during the many years that uh, Paul was um, uh, not uh, on a ministry, on a, and a missionary journey, when he wasn't starting churches and uh, writing these letters, before that, many years went by, I believe 14 years, where he, he really... We don't think he did anything. As far as the scriptures say, uh, he wasn't active. Uh, we can only uh, guess and theorize about what was going on. Uh, I believe uh, during that time, uh, I suspect that Jesus appeared to him many times and uh, taught him. And, and this is what he's referring to here is that uh, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus himself revealed these things to Paul. Um, now, let me read that in the Amplified. <clears throat> oh, by the way, in the Amplified version, it, it has um, uh, subtitles. Uh, you see, when the scriptures were written, um, there were uh, there were no uh, chapter divisions. There were no verse notations. Um, these things were added uh, much much later by uh, I'm not sure who really was the first one to start dividing the the, uh, the scriptures up into chapter and verse. Um, it's, it serves a very important purpose so that we can easily find something. We can we know exactly where something is because uh, the, uh, the chapter and verse gives us the address or the location of the, the, the particular verse we're looking for. Uh, so it's important. Uh, it's very useful, uh, but it was not part of the scriptures. And some people, they take the... Um, the numbering of the chapters and verses as also inspired as equal to the scriptures themselves and, and, and they believe that that also is the word of God. Um, I've studied that to a certain extent. I, mean, uh, I wouldn't pretend to be an expert on it. Uh, it is interesting how uh, there are a lot of examples that it seems it's beyond being a coincidence that the numbering, uh, there is some significance to it. 
So I'm not dismissing it as a, a crazy idea, uh, but I'm not convinced that uh, uh, we should we should consider chapter and verse uh, as as inspired by God. Um, but the point here is that uh, in the KJV, uh, it does not have uh, any um, subtitles uh, within the chapter. Uh, for example, uh, when I look at chapter one in Galatians in the Amplified, it says the very beginning, it, it's titled Introduction. Now, the word introduction is is not in the scriptures. Uh, some publisher or, or some uh, uh, translator uh, decided that, that word should be there to help us understand that this following verses are the introduction. Uh, and then beginning with verse 8, it says that the subtitle is perversion of the gospel. Now, and so the following verses after that, uh, 8, 9, and 10, uh, they would be uh, ex explaining that the, the gospel has been perverted. Uh, now, in the KJV, it doesn't have any of these subtitles, but sometimes the subtitle can, can be helpful, uh, but uh, in this case, we, when we get to verse 11, uh, the subtitle in the Amplified says, Paul defends his ministry. So um, Paul has been under attack for you know, almost 2,000 years now. Uh, from, from the very, very beginning, uh, even the, the, the real Christians who, uh, who agree with Paul on the gospel uh, they they did not trust Paul in the beginning because uh, Paul was imprisoning and uh, laying waste to the to the church, and so they were very much afraid and skeptical when they heard that well Paul's a believer now. Uh, so, so it probably took quite a while uh, for him to be accepted by um, by some of them. Uh, some of them probably still never accepted Paul. They always had their doubts. Uh, but from uh, the first century and even to today, uh, we, we also have people who just do not accept Paul uh, as a, a real apostle. So some of the things that Paul says in his letters uh, is because he his apostleship was challenged and so he, many times he d tries to uh, defend his legitimacy as a as an apostle. So, beginning with verse eleven, through verse uh, through the end of the chapter, uh, this subtitle, the Amplified says, Paul defends his ministry. Um, so in the Amplified, uh, it says. In verse 11, for I want you to know, believers, that the gospel which was preached by me is not man's gospel. It is not a human invention patterned after any human concept. For indeed, I did not receive it from man, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a direct revelation of Jesus Christ. Uh, I would have thought that they would have phrased it, uh, I received it through a direct revelation from Jesus Christ instead of of Jesus Christ. Uh, but I, I, I guess the point is uh, easily understood either way though, that Jesus himself personally taught the Apostle Paul um, another interesting thing here in this, uh, comparing these uh, KJV and it amplified is, uh, in, in the KJV in verse 11, it says, but I certify you, 
brethren. So he's certifying or he's guaranteeing this or he's swearing it. He's, he's um, vowing that this is all true. And everything he's about to tell you is he, he's certifying it. But he refers to them in the KJV as brethren. Now, um, the use of the, of the word brethren, um, unfortunately, uh, I, I know some brethren, some believers, some Christians who um, didn't understand that brethren doesn't always mean believers in Jesus Christ. Sometimes when we see the word brethren, it's uh, uh, talking to a Jew talking to other Jews, and, and he's using brethren uh, to describe the relationship as they're all Jews, they're, they're brothers in Judaism. Uh, so there was a point in my study of the book of Acts where this became uh, a very important point because w one of my co-workers, uh, he thought because it said brethren, that it was referring to, well, they must be believers. Uh, and um, so when you see the word brethren, don't always assume that it's talking about a Christian believer. It could be talking about, uh, this is a, a fellow Jew. But in this case, uh, I believe it is correct to use the word brethren and believer. And in the Amplified, that's exactly what they do. Uh, it says, for I want you to know believers instead of in the Amplified says I but I certify you brethren so the Amplified is is uh, taking the position that the word brethren here means believers rather than just fellow Jew uh, now let's go to verse 13 in the KJV for ye have heard of my con my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. Um, I'm going to read that in the Amplified, verse 13. You have heard of my career and former manner of life in Judaism, how I used to hunt down and persecute the church of God extensively and with fanatical zeal tried my best to destroy it. So, uh, um, it's, it's well known. I mean, it, Paul is, uh, he, he's, I'm sure he regrets what he did, but he's not trying to conceal it. It's, it's not a, a secret. He doesn't want anybody to know. Yeah, I'm the Apostle Paul, and uh, I used to be Saul of Tarsus, the zealot Pharisee that was uh, tasked with rounding up all these believers in Jesus and persecuting them. Um, so he, he's not uh, concealing it. He's not denying it. Um, and of course, because of his past, uh, that's, that's why a lot of people hesitated to trust him. And as I said, some people probably never completely trusted him. Um, for ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion. Now, the interesting thing is, Paul, here's one example, but I know this occurs uh, many times, where Paul refers to the Jews or the Jews' religion, and uh, it's as 
there's me and there's them. I'm not part of them. Uh, and really, that's that's the whole point of the book of Galatians. That is at least 50% of Paul's entire ministry and message is that Judaism has to be separated and discarded and left behind. You must not hold on to it if you're a Jew. You must leave it behind. And if you're a Gentile, you must not believe what the Judaizers tell you, that if you want to believe in Jesus, it's necessary for you to convert to Judaism, and then you can believe in Jesus. Um, so he is uh, uh, really, is, as I said, I think that at least half of the uh, importance of Paul's role in the church is to make that very point, that you've got to leave religion out of this. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's in any kind of religion, but particularly at that, that particular time and place in history, the religion that was the problem was Judaism. You cannot mix Judaism and Christianity. Um, so he is, he, when he says, in time past in the Jews' religion, uh, so... It's it's kind of subtle, and you 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 might easily just read it, and it might not even register with you. You might you might miss it easily, but he's he's really drawing a line of separation. I'm no I'm no longer really a Jew in the terms of practicing Judaism. Yeah, he's still a Jew in terms of uh, his genealogy, but it, but in terms of uh, his faith. Uh, no, he, he doesn't have any faith in circumcision or, or the Sabbath or the dietary laws or temple worship or, or uh, animal sacrifices. He has no faith in those at all. Uh, let me read that verse. I already did read that verse in the Amplified. Verse 14 in the KJV and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. So he was not just a Jew. He was not just a very religious, uh, zealous Jew. He was a Pharisee, uh, which is the most extreme sect of, of the Jews that were so zealous for the law. Uh, and he, uh, so he's, he's making the point that, look, I, I used to be the most fanatical legalist. So these people who are, these Judaizers who are coming in here telling you you've got to be very legal, follow all the laws of Judaism. Well, nobody knows more about that than me. Paul was making the point. I know as well as anybody. I, I I excelled in it as nobody did better than him at practicing Judaism. Verse 14 in the Amplified says, uh, <clears throat> and you have heard how I surpassed many of my contemporaries among my countrymen in my advanced study of the laws of Judaism, as I was extremely loyal to the, to the traditions of my ancestors. Now, verse 15 in the KJV, but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia 
and returned again unto Damascus. Um, there's, a, as I, I, I said earlier, that many years went by, I believe 14 years, where Paul was, he didn't just get saved and all of a sudden, boom, he's out there going on missionary journeys and, and uh, starting churches and, and uh, writing his letters. There was quite a delay. Why? Why the delay? I, I can't really say with confidence, uh, but I do know that I'm convinced that uh, during that time, Jesus was teaching him. Um, okay, let's read that portion in the Amplified. But when God, who had chosen me and set me apart before I was born and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles as the good news, the way of salvation. I did not immediately consult with anyone for guidance regarding God's call and his revelation to me. Nor did I even go to up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and stayed a while and afterward returned once more to Damascus. All right, so back to the KJV in verse 17. Neither what I, oh, verse 18, I mean. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But other of the apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother. So uh, after three years, he went to Jerusalem and met with Peter, stayed with him for 15 days. And he did also see James. It doesn't say how much time he spent with James, uh, you know, what exactly happened in his time uh, with James. So we really can't say for sure. Um, I think the point he's really making is that he did spend about 15 days with Peter. So let's look at that in the Amplified. Nor did I even go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, but I went Oops, I'm sorry. Verse 18. Then, three years later, I did go up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Cephas, uh, which is, Cephas is the, uh, the Greek name for Peter. And I stayed with him 15 days, but I did not see any other apostle except James, the half-brother of the Lord. Yeah, I think the half-brother that's important to understand, of course, because uh, you see, the, the Roman Catholics, even today, teach and argue that Mary, uh, Jesus' mother, is a perpetual virgin, and that uh, so. The Holy Spirit came over her. She was uh, became pregnant without being with any man uh, and gave birth to Jesus as a virgin. But then we know that uh, the scriptures say that Jesus had brothers and sisters. Uh, at least two of them we know are the names of them, James, uh, who is mentioned here in chapter uh, chapter one of Galatians, uh, and and also Jude, who wrote the the epistle 
with the title by his name, Jude. Um, the other brothers and sisters, uh, I don't think there is a record of their names, but uh, the Roman Catholics teach that these other these siblings of Jesus were um, not really related to Jesus, except that uh, they teach that Joseph, who became the stepfather of Jesus, who married Mary and uh, raised Jesus as his son, uh, but was not his biological father. Uh, they, they say that when Mary and James uh, got married, that James had a previous marriage and he had a bunch of children from the previous marriage. So I am assume that they say that he was not a divorcee, but, but a, a widow, so, or a widower, whatever it is, when a man loses, when his wife dies. Um, and now James has all these children already, and then Mary's uh, Mary, and, and they have, and, and Jesus is born. So um, the scriptures tell us that uh, these were his brothers and sisters, but the Roman Catholics want us to believe that no, that's not possible because Virgin, Mary never had sex. She remained a virgin her whole, whole life. So these siblings had to be from a, a previous marriage of, of uh, uh, Joseph. I have to watch this back and think. Sometimes I think I'm saying, I might think I'm saying Joseph and I said James. I think I might have done this earlier. So, but the, of course, we know that the, the man that